Hi everyone in cloud computing and welcome to episode 36 of the Cloud Computing Australia show with Brad Nelson and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show, we are excited to have as our special guest, Amit Zavery. Amit is the Executive Vice President of Product Development, Oracle Cloud Platform, Middleware and Java, and a member of Oracle's executive team. He was instrumental in building Oracle's Fusion Middleware product portfolio that scaled from zero to five billion US dollars in annual revenue in less than 10 years, and is now leading Oracle's transformation into a cloud platform provider by starting and building Oracle's public cloud. Hi, Amit, and a warm welcome to you. Thanks for being on the show this week. Yeah, thanks for having me. Hi, Dave, and it's a warm welcome to you too, and thanks for being on the show again. It's exciting to have you both uh, on the Australia show. It's great to be here. It's great to have Amit on the show. Yeah, it really is. It really is. Thank you. I really appreciate your uh, your time, guys, because I know it's a, a Sunday evening for you, whereas it's uh, my Monday morning in, uh, in Melbourne, Australia. <laughs> Convenient for you. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, look, on this week's show, we're talking about the rise of chatbots in Australia, and it's been a rather impressive rollout with the virtual assistants, including NIB Health's Funds Nibby, Domino Pizza's Drew Assist, and Jetstar's chatbot Jess. And the banks are particularly fond of the technology, with Eubank's RoboChat, NAB's Digital Virtual Banker, and CBA's Ciba and AMP's Rosie, which were among those implemented in customer-facing roles. So I think I've got a, a nice opening question for you, Dave, uh, to kick off the show, if I may. Does this mean the end to talking to humans within Australia? So I, I think this is not going to be the end of humans talking uh, to each other. And I think that chatbots ultimately are going to have a place. I, I think we have a tendency to overuse the technology. I think the underlying artificially intelligent technology, machine learning technology that's used by the you know, popular chatbots out there and also the ones that are unpopular, the, the ones that people are using to build applications. The really handy is just basically another way to interface with a computer. It's also another way to interface with natural language processing kinds of systems. I, I think we have a tendency today, and I'd be a little of a, a, little of a, a contrarian uh, to overuse the technology. I, I think if I see another chatbot demonstration, I'm gonna have a seizure, because I, I, I probably see 20 of them a week now. And uh, of course, I'm going to all the uh, Google Next and the AWS uh, reInvents coming up, and it's going to continue on, you know. And so, even even um, you know, people I work with building chatbots, things like that. I built about a dozen applications leveraging chatbots, and you know, it just becomes kind of commonplace in the ways in which we're, you know, interfacing with computers. And I think it's revolutionary into itself. We have a tendency to take revolutionary things. To an extreme level, and I, I think ultimately we just need to find the place where it sits, and also the the true value of this, which is the artificial intelligence back end with these systems at play. So, I, man, I like to like, love to get your comments on this. No, I think you're probably right on in terms of uh, it's not about replacing humans or not interacting with humans. It's really about how you augment uh, ability to kind of get information in easy and uh, consumable fashion, right? So, there are a lot of people who are interfacing through many different ways to the backend applications. If you want to use different channels like say Skype, for example, or you want to start using things like WhatsApp, WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger, there's no reason why you can't get enterprise data through that. So chatbot is just a medium, a technology to make it easier instead of you having to navigate multiple things and be able to get that information in an easy, consumable manner. So I don't think so the human part goes away completely. It's just that the way humans interact, instead of having to go through multiple websites and clicks and apps and everything else, I just making your life easier. That's all it is. So I think the human spot still continues to evolve and uh, it's really uh, going to be that in, in the future as well. So do you think in 10 years we're going to be uh, talking more to our computers or not talking more to our computers going forward? Will be some other interface creative things or way, ways in which we'll exchange information with these devices? I think you will be probably uh, uh, doing less kind of interaction because maybe the applications and the chatbots will be able to get you to pinpoint of, pinpoint of the data faster. So your number of uh, interactions might reduce, which is probably a good thing because you don't want to be in front of your screen whole day trying to get your work done. So the chatbots evolving to digital assistants uh, will be able to now maybe predict or at least give you an idea of what you really need and get you to that uh, process or function or information in a faster manner. So you can probably hopefully free up more time 
instead of you being kind of in front of the screen whole day at work and trying to do your job, done, get your job done. So do you think that we'll be uh, interacting with uh, predictive analytical systems and uh, big data systems more so with chatbots going forward in the future to assemble, you know, kind of what we want to look at uh, versus trying to figure out the query and the uh, interacting with the menu and, you know, doing things in a manual way? Yeah, I do, I do think so. I think you, uh, as users, we will be using and working with AI-based systems much more. Right, so that is where the predictive part and the process automation becomes a little more smoother. Uh, today, if you are trying to say, uh, do your corporate work, uh, just kind of enter your vacation days, for example, into the system, the backend system. The, the amount of time you spend by the time you get that thing done is probably 15, 20 minutes by the time you get to the application you need. If you can reduce that, that's really where this AI part comes in and gets to the function uh, in a much faster manner. So what about integration of chatbots into the IoT-based stuff, you know, down to the device level, things like that? That seems to be a larger trend. Yeah. But do you think that's going to continue? Yeah, I do think so. I think this is uh, the new medium, and uh, it'll get smarter and smarter, and it becomes very pervasive. Once it becomes pervasive, I don't think you'll realize you're interfacing with a chatbot. It's, it's just like you don't realize you're interfacing through a mobile app, and you don't think twice about what a mobile app looks like. Just that's your, the way you intera interact in today. Uh, to your applications. Eventually, that becomes the next medium is the chatbot and the devices or whatever may be the case, and you don't really, as a user, think more about it. So do you think we'll, we'll ever get completely to chatbot-based interfaces, or um, we're going to have the dual chatbot and user uh, and user interface kind of we have today? I mean, I can use this less Alexa you know, via conversation, but I can also use it via query language if I want to. So do you think we're always going to have the choice? Yeah, yeah, I don't think so. This is one size fits all, right? So people, are, just because we got mobile app doesn't mean the web apps went away, right? Uh, similarly, I think uh, when uh, so everybody doesn't like to use voice as well. So there will be situations in, in an open office environment or if you're doing things in a public space, you might not want to interface through a voice-based system. So you might be using chat. You might not like to do chat or something, which you might be in a different environment. You might be using an application, which is much more intensive and uh, pervasive experience as well. So it all depends on what you're trying to do. And a lot of the agents, for example, people are doing a lot of the backend system work. They will be still be interfacing through a web app in many cases. They're not going to do everything as a chatbot. I got a part one for you. Do you think that we'll have a time when uh, natural language uh, queries will be communicating one to another? I, I wrote books on integration. It's really kind of a, a core thing that we need to do as we're making all these various information systems talk, but we're still dealing with API to API mapping. And uh, there's lots of uh, uh, tech, technical stuff that has to occur behind the scenes to make them communicate. I mean, what if they could communicate behind the scenes by, uh, in essence, having not necessarily uh, something that makes a noise, but they could have conversations that would be natural language conversations? Yeah, I think over time, maybe, I think we are still so early in this technology adoption, understanding how to make it work. Inter-system integration is still not very easy. Uh, people have very different interfaces, uh, understanding what other applications are trying to build a process across multiple applications. As you're saying, that integration is still very complicated. I, say, uh, I think if you take the analogy of maybe cricket in Australia, right, we are probably in the first session of the five-day test match. Right, so it's going to be a long way away before we land up getting to a lot of those integrations and systems which work interoperably. Any possibility these computers are going to communicate one to another, create a network, rise up and kill us? <laughs> I think everybody's uh, fantasy of sci-fi maybe becomes much more exciting than it was before, but no, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think it'd be too hard to outwit, uh, at least the ones I've seen so far. So automobile integration, uh, I just noticed that this week the, um, uh, the head uh, engineer or one of the head, head um, thought leaders at Tesla went to Apple computing mm -hmm. and suddenly these, uh, these automobiles are becoming software defined. Uh, when can we see AI engines and chatbot communication with these things even more so than we have today? Because right now everything's kind of outbound and sent through the network to another back end system, but when can you communicate directly with the automobiles? Yeah, it will happen. I think uh, the, if you look at what people are trying to do with the self-driving cars, and it's, it's just in a distant future, you will have cars like that which are talking to each other in the on the road and interfacing to figure out who's where and what uh, to worry about or how to make your cars work 
uh, in, a, in a traffic situation. So those things will happen. I think uh, the communication will get very pervasive across multiple systems, devices, cars, uh, your apps, and there will be a lot more intelligence than we would probably even realize what's going on in the back end. So there, that's going to be happening, yes. So it looks like Australia is taking off with chatbot technology. We have a great deal of it here in the United States. So where do you think the countries, what countries of the world do you think will, you know, kind of lom onto this technology first and grow it quickly? I think you'll start seeing countries where there's a lot more usage of, uh, I would say, social media uh, and channels, which are not, not not the typical things we do with the web browser-based kind of applications, right? So uh, with the uh, U.S., no doubt, we have a lot of adoption in this kind of technology today. Uh, we're seeing a lot of interest in China. Uh, there's a lot of uh, devices being manufactured as well as integration between systems. Always been, been designed from the day one kind of thing when they build new devices. So that's definitely happening. I've seen a lot of use cases in Japan. Uh, with areas where there's a lot of banking sector kind of activity and consumer activities being uh, Spain, we have a lot of customers who are doing chatbot-based chat -based technology and integration. Uh, we're seeing a similar thing in UK. So I think, uh, of course, we have a lot of customers in Australia. So you guys have been in the forefront in many of these adoptions. I think this is going to be very pervasive, very uh, well kind of light kind of way of interfacing. So it just reduces your time and effort. So why not? And Last question. Say, oh, sorry, yeah, sorry, Dave. I'll go, I'll go after you, Dave. <laughs> I just wanted to say one last question. So, like, say you had a time machine, we went ahead, uh, you know, 10 years in time. You know, what, what are capabilities that the chatbots going to have that they don't have right now, Matt? I think that the thing which you'll see over the next uh, five years, uh, we elevate things chatbot to digital assistant. The chatbot is going to become a skill by every application. So every application or every system will come with a chatbot interface, most probably. Uh, and then you'll have your own personal digital assistant for your enterprise work or your or your day-to-day -day, uh, uh, kind of managing your life, con connecting with all the different chatbots. Uh, as you can think about the way you talk about skills, for example, for Alexa, right? And then you have Alexa kind of coordinating across some of the skills. But today, they don't even know about each other's skills. Now, what you'll see with digital assistant, I will know five other, five other chatbots who is interfacing with me for my day-to-day -day work, and the digital assistant is really kind of managing that whole business process or your flow or information flow across those different systems. So that's what I expect over the next three to five years. Yeah, I think I agree. That's what we're going to see. Well, back to you, Brad. Thank you, Dave. Uh, yeah, I've got to, I have one question for you, Hamid, because I think we've, we've covered some great topics. There were a couple of questions, but Dave's covered them off really well. Um, where do you see your priorities within Oracle and artificial intelligence and chatbots? So I think the way we look at AI, for example, AI is uh, just like what happened with cloud many years ago, right? It, it becomes kind of the standard way for you to build your software, right? So I, I at Oracle and my team at Oracle, we, the way we've been looking at it is to make sure that we have AI foundational services available for anybody to embed and use it in their applications, be it Oracle applications, the one we build at Oracle, as well as companies who might be using a technology to build applications. So it becomes a pervasive set of technologies with set of APIs, frameworks, and uh, capabilities, which becomes very usable and embeddable, right? That's one. And then we start building uh, applications which are even using a lot of the AI stuff as an embeddable offering as well. So for example, you look at Chatbot. Chatbot is really an AI-based solution for you to interface with the, with the data you might be getting in a typical other way, right? So that's the priority is to really have a full-blown open standard-based AI platform allowing data scientists or application developer to have a full life cycle around AI and be able to embed that in the application and make it very easy and uh, able to use it with all the data you might be collecting. Fantastic. Thanks, Samit. And thanks for being part of the Australia show. Really appreciate that. Sure, sure. Thanks for having me. And Dave, thanks again, always. That's a pleasure. It's great to have him in on. Yeah, really good, really good. And we're excited because obviously we've got you for the uh, C-Suite Management Show and also the training show this week as well, Amit. So, uh, you know, really do appreciate your time. And look, everyone, thanks for watching. We really hope you enjoyed watching the show this week. Um, you can get us all on Twitter and uh, in the description box below, there'll be all the links to Amit's Twitter, David and myself as usual. So look, thanks for watching. Remember to like, subscribe and comment on the channel and, uh, you know, share this video with your friends and with your colleagues and look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks very much.